years old, man. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. We are down in Gardena, California at the old Shelby building. And we're about to go in to visit with the guys from OVC. OVC stands for Original Venice Crew. That's right, these are the guys that worked directly with Shelby in the very beginning. We are gonna shoot one of the GT350R continuation cars that these guys are building. This is exact to the GT350R as it was originally designed, which includes the independent rear suspension that was originally designed for the car that Ford decided they didn't want to spend the money on. And we are lucky enough to go in and shoot one of these cars. So all I can say is hold on, because here we go, man. <laughs> all right, you guys, so I'm here with Jim Murrieta from OVC, the original Venice crew. So what we're gonna get into is the GT350R. You guys have decided to build 36 of these, correct? Mm -hmm. Only 36. And that's it? Yeah. And this is about as exact to the original design as possible with a couple of changes, correct? Well, the major change is the independent rear suspension. Back in the day, Ford wanted to put an independent rear suspension in their cars and they had a couple of prototypes. One was a Falcon, another was a Notchback Mustang, and then at Shelby's they gave us the independent rear suspension to put in the Fastback, and I was fortunate enough to actually work on that project. We tested it a number of times at Willow and uh, Riverside with both Bob Bondurant and Ken Miles as test drivers. <laughs> and Ken more or less was the was the chief driver on that and so he didn't feel comfortable with it and so we were always trying to modify it to get it to to feel to feel more comfortable for Ken he felt that when it went from tension to compression he could feel the, the subtle change and somewhere along the line Ford decided we're not going to do that it costs too much money you know back in the day you could buy a brand new high performance Mustang I think for like 2,500 bucks round numbers, right? Mm -hmm. And to add the independent rear suspension was another $15 a cost. <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, why do that? And then it complicated the car because now you had to have a, a alignment on the front end and rear end. Right. And I think that since they were selling every car they could ever build, it's like, well, you know, why complicate life and add cost? Right. right. Let's just go with what we got. Right. Which I guess was the proper decision at the time. Yeah. Right? You know, fast forward 50 some years later, I ended up uh, through a very circuitous route with some of the original parts that were actually fabricated by Ford Advanced Vehicles at the time. So we put a lot of that, a lot of those uh, parts, not all of it, but a lot of the parts in this car. The other major change would be in the engine. Although we start out with a period correct block, we strip the block down to just the main caps and bolts and we send it to the Carroll Shelby Engine Company. And I chose them because it's a Carroll Shelby Engine Company. <laughs> <laughs> and so we bore and stroke it to a 331 okay. and we use aluminum heads because porting cast iron heads is such a difficult thing mm -hmm. to get done and very expensive where we can put basically Carroll Shelby aluminum heads on it and get a much better result for a lot less cost and, you know, and a lot less headache. Right. On pump gas, it pumps out about 450 to 460 horsepower. Wow. And it's always a very reliable, somewhat maintenance-free. We race our car with the same configuration in it, mm -hmm. and it does real well. But yeah, for, for the most part, it's a street car. Right. The other major change is that we use an electric fan. Because it is a street car, we put an electric fan on, and so that has taken care of, of that issue. We have operational brake cooling ducts on this, on the outside, so it looks somewhat like a 66. Peter Brock assured me that that was on his drawing board at the time, and then he didn't get a chance to finish it. Now, is it drum rear brake, or is it? No, on, on the independent rear suspension, it's four-wheel disc brakes. Okay. Same caliper as the front, Kelsey Hayes front and rear. Okay. What's the weight of this car? It weighs about 2,700 pounds. Well, we take most of the 
creature comforts out of it. We take all the sound ending out, the carpeting. We even take all the window mechanisms out, right? And we'll put aluminum frames in and plexiglass windows with pull-up straps. Right. You know, I mean, just that alone is probably 50 pounds of door. I'll right? bet. The front fascia was redesigned by Peter Brock for this car. So he said, <clears throat> I designed this so that the their rectangle and they go right down the outside of the frame and dump right onto the brake. Wow. So that's what so that's why it's this now. That's right. One of the things I love I want to walk over this sure. way because one of the things I I think a lot of people would miss walking around this car is that you're vented here at the glass. Yeah. The original competition models would come up here and then to go in it had that little hump. Yeah. And then go underneath. Yeah. So Peter said, if I was there when the real glass would have come in, I would have sent it back because that's not how I designed it. I wanted it nice and smooth, you know, like a nice French curve piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, they didn't get it right. And by the time I got back from Europe, it was too far along. And so, <laughs> you know, we just let it go. But he said, I'd, what I'd like to do is redesign the rear window the, the way it was supposed to be done. Yeah. This is our new rear window. And this is aircraft quality glass. It's about a two inch space and it, and it does two things. Number one is it helps evacuate the hot air sure. from the compartment. And also as the air comes across, okay, and with this vent here, it reduces the vacuum. So he, he fills the car goes another couple of miles an hour quicker because you don't have a vacuum buildup. Hmm. So. Not he, gonna argue with Peter on I'm that I'm not one, arguing right? with Peter because he built a Daytona Coupe. <laughs> and he was kind of spot on with that one. So Man, was so, he ever. So when he talks about, you know, uh, you know, vacuums and airflow, I go, okay, what, just tell me how you want it. And right. That's what we're gonna do. Just so. awesome. And it really is, I mean, looking in from this view, I mean, it's really stripped down. Like, it's a race car. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Mm -hmm. You've got you mm -hmm. guys have set it up like the things you were talking about—the electric fans, so that you can street drive this car. Mm -hmm. But it's really you guys yeah. have recreated what the race car was. Now, are these bias plies? To yeah, they are. They're bias ply Goodyear race tires. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to probably add to the fun of it, I think, and the nostalgia mm -hmm. of, of the era of car that. Well, in the is. look, I mean, it mm -hmm. it gives it a little bit more of a grizzly look. I agree. You know, I totally the agree. P1, so. I totally agree. What is the wheel and tire size on this? Is it They're 15s. They are 15s, yeah. yeah. If you do enough to this car, it turns out to be a Frankenstein. And I don't want it to be a Frankenstein. I want it to be as close as we did 50 years ago, given the changes that we talked yeah. about. Because you worked on the original car, right? You yes. were part of the development of yeah. that original car. Yeah. Yeah, it was myself, uh, Ted Sutton, and Peter Bryan were the three hands-on guys, and Ted was the crew chief. And I was a really young guy, 17 at the time. <laughs> and uh, Peter Bryant, he was John Surtees' F1 mechanic. Gosh. I worked shoulder to shoulder with this with this guy when I was 17. You know, what a was, surreal life you've lived. Yeah, it, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, yeah. It was a lot of fun. You know, Dan Gurney had walked by, and all these guys. You know, it's kind of kind of a neat time. You know, this is. Like, I, I was born the year this car was born. I, I was born in 65, mm -hmm. so that it's, it's, like, I grew up watching these, you know, as a little kid. I remember my dad telling stories about renting the, the, the Hertz, the Hertz car. racers, mm -hmm. basically, you know, mm -hmm. and him and his buddies would go out to the track, they'd run, and they'd clean the car up, and they'd drop it drive back off back, Monday yeah. morning and then go to work. Yeah, and I'm trying to bring it back and, and do what we did 50 years ago, and the roll bars come from the same tooling from 50 years ago. I get them from a guy who bought the tooling and so the same roll bar, exactly. So. It's just wonderful. I want to touch on this again. Yeah, we put the master on off switch for the battery as a safety factor. 50 years ago, I actually put the, the battery in the trunk and ran the wire myself, ran the cable up to the solenoid. There was no, there was no cutoff. But to get past tech nowadays, and for general safety purposes, you know, I put in this master uh, mm -hmm. shutoff switch. Mm -hmm. I call those safety upgrades. So when you build these, you start with a 65 Mustang. Yes, with a title that matches the VIN. I'm curious, how many hours is it to complete one of these cars? Because it's all handmade. I mean, there's yeah. no... Yeah, we're probably into it probably close to 2,000 hours. And that's after you've proven the fact with this car, now you're... Because I can't even imagine what you have development hours into that car. Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. But now that you're in the process of replicating, mm -hmm. for, for the most part, you're replicating the car, right. it's still a couple thousand hours. Sure. 
Why 36? Because I only did 36 the first time. <laughs> I love it. What yeah. a great answer. Right? Yeah. I didn't even know that there was only 36 yeah. originally. Only 36 you know, or right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's go for a drive, I okay. think, yeah? opportunity to you know to be around guys that have history like you and for you you're just you but for me you're the guy that was part of all this stuff and I don't know just just a oh, yeah. no, I, I hell of an experience for me All right, you guys, that is it for our shoot here with Jim and the folks at OVC. I'm completely blown away right now, man. The, the amount of history, the stories, the cars, you know, the ride. I mean, just truly, truly blown away right now. <laughs> I, don't, I honestly don't know what to say except for thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I truly do appreciate it. I'm completely floored right now. I don't know what I'm gonna to do to come down from this one, but anyhow, thanks a lot for hanging. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man, later. <laughs>